because we realized that the deletions would then define by what's commonly deleted in, in, in a series of boys uh, that define regions that might be important towards the expression of this disease locus. And we were able to obtain 55 DNA samples uh, who had been demonstrated to be deletions and then analyze them across the entire cloned region, which at that point was 137,000 base pairs and is now subsequently um, almost uh, over 200,000 base pairs. We were able to map very precisely where these deletion breakpoints were. This is the one out here. In a collaborative effort with more than 23 research laboratories throughout the world, they found that a significant number of Duchenne boys had complete or partial deletions along the map they had worked out. But not all parts of a gene are essential to its function. One way of checking whether DNA is important to the proper functioning of muscles is to find a sequence that is present not only in humans, but in other animals. Yeah, you're actually right. He yeah, actually, I think, got a, like a three. If we go from this to the mouse, uh, we could actually prove it. And so what we did was we searched uh, within the 200,000 base pair region, but specifically emphasizing the regions that the deletions had indicated might be important. And lo and behold, we were able to identify uh, two segments which were highly conserved. That is, they were maintained their nucleotide sequence between both mouse and man, and in one case, one actually is conserved into birds. So this was a segment of DNA that presumably evolution has maintained as being important, whereas the surrounding material was not maintained at all. And you know, we should take the mouse CDNAs and put them on there, and that would directly show it. it if, well. if it showed two bands, it showed the other one that it's, it's right underneath. Right if the conserved segment coded for a protein, then they knew that they should be able to find its message or transcript. And if that's really there, we could show... They looked in various tissues of the body and eventually found the transcript exactly where they expected to find it. The transcript was seen to be in, in, present in muscle, but not in a lot of other tissues. So one would then assume that this disease was that of muscle, which we already knew, and here we see the gene being expressed in muscle. So that was the evidence that this was presumably the gene. Am I on the right track, Dr. Kunkel, when I say that if you're going to find the gene, we found the doozy? Okay. See, I put it in terms people can understand, because if he tells you, you go all look at one another like you're going to have a skin rash from, because they're, I can't get them to talk regular. You know how scientists are. We really were quite excited, but we knew that we had a lot of work to do still. This is basically just the first step. We need to go much, much further. And as scientists, I think we really need to do a lot more. Uh, this is the first step towards an understanding of this disorder. And I would anticipate some very, very interesting results in the next, next couple of years about what's really wrong in the muscle of these boys. Uh, I can only tell you that uh, my gratitude is only exceeded by the fact that I don't know how to express it. It emotionally touches every fiber and every nerve end of my body. I didn't very honestly believe at the very beginning that we would see this kind of progress in my lifetime. For that matter, I was told by the medical community and the scientific community that I was knocking on the dead door years ago. To see this breakthrough tells me that indeed in my lifetime, I'm going to see my kids better than they are today. But Kunkel's team had not yet sequenced the entire gene, only part of it. What effect would their results have on other labs? Uh, by publishing this, it'll also allow the competition to catch up. In other words, we've told them where it's expressed, how big it is, and where it is in the genome, and actually have given them clones and sequence information uh, to, to obtain the same sequence. And uh, I'm sure they will. Uh, and I think, actually, though, both of the groups being interviewed on this program, uh, Ron Wharton and Kay Davies, both have gotten there independently, and... Uh, they also have similar information that we do. It's just not quite as far along. Ron, we got a longer CDNA clone than the previous It was only a matter of weeks before another team, led by Wharton in Toronto, independently reached a similar stage in their research. There's the original. So that's the longer one. They had succeeded in isolating a different piece of the gene. It came from the breakpoint of a translocated X chromosome in a girl with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Now, our patient was unique in that... Um, not only did she have this break in the X chromosome at what we then assumed was the site of the gene, but 
the part that was broken from the X was attached to chromosome 21 at the site of another known gene that had already been isolated in Philadelphia. And what we were able to do then is to take sequences from the chromosome 21 gene, use that as a probe to find a piece of DNA that spanned the junction. So it therefore had the chromosome 21 gene at one end and the muscular dystrophy gene or part of it at the other end. And this one is one of the original set too, I guess. That's what I found. That's a great result. Congratulations. Kunkel's approach led him to a site on the X chromosome, which let's say is here. Um, our own approach led us to this translocation junction, which is close but not in the same spot. We have done what's called walking along the chromosome to isolate a hundred uh, thousand base pairs of the chromosome. Kunkel has done the same thing from his original clone to isolate 200,000 base pairs. We have not yet overlapped, although we know we must be close. And that, plus additional evidence, um, indicates to us that the gene uh, includes all of that material that has been isolated, and then some. So that uh, we now have reason to believe uh, that the gene might include as much as a million or two or three million base pairs of the X chromosome. So Wharton's marker was next to the translocation breakpoint. Progress from this and from Kunkel's marker have since been rapid, and now they've met and overlapped. The total distance walked so far is about one quarter of what they estimate the total size of the gene to be. The competition to get there first no doubt provided that extra stimulus. But now that one of the largest genes ever discovered has nearly been sequenced, how do the competitors feel about entering the home straight? I suppose the Duchenne muscular dystrophy research can be described as healthy competition because essentially it's a race. So if anyone gets a result that's an exciting step forward, then they will work that particular result up, that particular new DNA sequence up in their own laboratories and then collaborate uh, a few months later there has been one common element, and that is find the expressed sequences from the gene, determine the protein structure and function, and understand the disease. Uh, we've all taken different routes to arrive at about the same point now, and from here on, there will be a lot of commonality of purpose as we are all attempting to isolate the rest of the gene, its protein product, determine its function, and so on. The different techniques used to find this gene have opened up the path to find genes that cause other inherited disorders. It's a formidable task, but mapping all the genes on every chromosome is within reach, and the excitement is sending ripples through the medical and scientific community. But how soon will it be before people suffering from Duchenne muscular dystrophy will see the benefits of this discovery? I think this is a big question that's been asked many times is once you have this gene, how long will it take you to understand what it does? And I think that uh, we'll, we'll have the entire nucleotide sequence and then the predicted protein sequence of this gene, if we have no technical difficulties, probably within the next year. Uh, and we're doing it both in mouse and man. Uh, I think that's very important. One then can there then compare the sequence, the protein sequence between mouse and man. And anything that's maintained between mouse and man are regions of that protein that are very important in its expression and its function. Uh, so we anticipate that in the near future, basically having information about the protein. We're forming a sort of image of the protein, you're right, but it's not uh, possible at this point to make any predictions about the exact nature of the protein. I think large genes usually make large proteins, so one would anticipate that this will be a very large protein. And large proteins are not usually the kind that circulate in the bloodstream and, and act, let's say, like a simple hormone. But large proteins are usually structural components of cells. So we're bu building an image of a large structural component of the cell, maybe a component of the, of the cell membrane, probably involved in muscle gene function or in muscle function of some sort. There are lots of examples of other human genetic diseases where we've known exactly what protein is involved. For example, if something goes wrong in globin in the blood, then we know everything about globin, we know the DNA sequence, the protein sequence, and yet 
even over the last 10 years, we've not really been able to come out with an effective treatment or even a cure. So if it's that type of disease, then we won't be able to make any immediate progress on being able to treat Duchenne muscular dystrophy. But of course, if it's something much more straightforward where we can replace the missing protein, then we can hope that we can treat this disease very effectively indeed. And that's why people are getting very excited. The hope for my kids, which is so magical for them, is also a marvelous hope for those people that have been so supportive after all these years, assuming that maybe one day they'll hear, well, we tried. But no, they're hearing that we're getting there. This is the best bit of news that we've ever had. We've always had a lot of hope for the future with the research, but we always knew that before they could find the cure, they had to find the gene to find out why it was happening and what it was doing. But now they can start looking at ways to stop the boys from getting any worse. And I think that um, with this big breakthrough they've got, then that can be in the very near future for us.